It's radio time with the Purdue University School of the Air. This is Continental Comment. The outliers are not recorded live because when an angry mob forms, we don't want to be here. Getting Indiana's oldest broadcasting station on the air for the first time was no easy task. Purdue University students and faculty in electrical engineering began experimenting with radio in 1910, but there was no manual to show them the way. Those experiments got a boost, though, in 1918, when Purdue began offering classes in radio communication to meet the needs of the U.S. Army Signal Corps. That effort provided the expertise necessary to put WBAA on the air in April 1922. And there may have actually been some broadcasts that were done before that, but the oldest issued license for broadcasting station is the license that WBAA still holds. The station was initially put on the air in part to help teach engineering students how to do radio. Unlike today's 24-7 schedule, the first license only got out broadcasting a very limited number of hours a week, and the station had to share its equipment. The equipment was shared by the amateur radio operators and the broadcast operation. It was not unheard of on a Friday after they signed off the air for the hams to come in and take out the modulator and use the transmitter on Morse code over the weekend. On Monday, people would say, oh, we gotta put the transmitter back together so we can broadcast voice this afternoon or early evening. No audio exists of early WBAA broadcasts since recording equipment was in its infancy and not available. Broadcasts were done live through musical performances, announcing teachings, events, or acting. Doubly building, they used to uh, call up their roommates, say, hey, can you play piano for the next half hour? They would fill whatever they could into the air slot if somebody couldn't make it. Hello, boys and girls. From the earliest days, education played a key role in programming of WBAA. One example, the School of the Air began in 1944 and ran through the late 1960s. It's radio time with the Purdue University School of the Air. And here is our lady storyteller with one of her favorite stories. This story is about a little boy as old as you are, boys and girls. One School of the Air show, Storyland Special, touched young children with poetry, music, and stories. Another, Lady Storyteller, used sound effects and dramatic story readings to reach older children. Different people speaking from afar, uh, echoes coming, perhaps maybe even a scream or two. Uh, it was really, truly like a movie script, only we were doing it on radio. You really thought you were there with the sound effects. Dick Forsyth, who headed up School of the Air, says many of its programs were aimed at supplementing instruction in schools. And we had things like music programs. Most of the schools could not afford to have music. And also in math and science and things that the schools needed. Mrs. Heath brings you stories and songs from the world of music. This is WBAA's Rose Bowl Special. Sports became another signature effort of WBAA, especially under the direction of John DeCamp. He was known as the voice of Purdue sports for 44 years. 30 of them spent working at WBAA. He was a mentor and father figure to many of the students and staff of the radio station. No doubt one of his most memorable games was Purdue's first Rose Bowl appearance in 1967. Play, Greasy rolls out to the right, throws again to Hurst in the flat. When DeCamp first began sports play-by-play, -play, he would reenact the game as if he was there using information transmitted from the field. If these wire reports were delayed, he would tell listeners there was a timeout. Of course, the technology later advanced to the point where play-by-play -play could be done live from the game site. Fumbles, fallen on by Purdue. One of DeCamp's protégés is Tim Newton, who still does Purdue sports broadcasting. Probably to the day that he died, John didn't know the impact that he had on many of us. And sometimes it was just something he would say in a casual conversation. Uh, sometimes it was just that little bit of advice that you would keep in the back of your mind. WBBM News Time, 824. Another DeCamp protege is John Holtman, who went on to become news director and morning drive co-anchor at WBBM News Radio in Chicago. Uh, John DeCamp was my mentor, really. 
uh, when I first got into broadcasting, and for many other people he was a mentor. He was just the best. At least two WBAA alumni went on to become nationally famous broadcasters, including television personality Derwood Kirby, who volunteered at WBAA in 1933 and 1934, and ABC sportscaster Chris Schenkel. So I wanted to become a broadcaster and especially uh, a sports announcer. So WBAA was the best of all the university college radio stations in the country. It just made it a little easier to realize your dreams because of the background you got at Purdue. Several times in its history, WBAA came close to being dropped by Purdue. People handling the budget, quite a few of them didn't think that it was necessary to budget any money to a radio station. They thought that was something they could do away with. Perhaps the most serious threat arose in the 1960s when university administrators proposed using the station's budget to start a university fundraising department. But WBAA general manager John DeCamp thwarted that effort, even though he didn't find out about it until one day before it was to go before the Board of Trustees. They were getting ready to take us off the air. There were people in the top administration that did not think we had any business running a radio station. He had two friends on the board of trustees, <laughs> and so he went to them. So when they presented their proposal the next day, the board refused to let them do that. So that saved us. Through the years, the station had to overcome several challenges to its existence, even from Mother Nature, such as the 1982 storm. Disaster struck in the form of straight line winds that toppled one of our broadcast towers and damaged another. That was a fearful event as it held a potential that that would be the end of WBAA. Keeping up with technology has been a constant battle for WBAA. For more than 54 years, the man at the front line has been Chief Engineer Maury Mogridge. He brought the station into the digital age, added the FM station, and integrated computers and internet streaming. It was an achievement to really make the transition from the vacuum tube area into the digital. Gosh, getting the FM on the air was a pretty big deal. We had struggled for quite some time to be able to do that, and fortunately the class of 42 came through and made it possible. One of the things that I'm really pleased how it turned out, getting our, our streaming on popular devices. This is public radio from Purdue University. You know, being able to stream directly to the iPhone and the Android. Now that WBAA is streamed through the internet, its potential audience has grown dramatically. We have gone from limited range, serving uh, north central Indiana, to really blanketing the world with the kind of unique programming that Purdue's WBAA is known for. WBAA cleared another hurdle in 2001 with the upgrading of its facilities in the basement of the Hall of Music, bringing the studios from 1940s vintage up to modern day. But memories of the old studio made this an emotional moment for some at the station. Even though this was better and we knew that we would have a brand new facility that we could work in, listening to them bash and the crashing of glass was just the hardest thing. <laughs> While the technical improvements enhanced sound quality and listener access, WBAA developed its stellar reputation with its first-rate news, educational, and music programming. It's Jazz Focus with Persis Newman. I think folks appreciated the local programming. The folks who would be a storyteller person, uh, there would be uh, uh, classes, school of the air. Of course, there was in-depth agricultural reporting and weather reporting, and of course, the music. You're listening to All Things Considered from NPR News. When National Public Radio began in 1971, WBAA was one of the first stations to carry it, first by landline transmission and later by satellite. But no extra funds were provided to cover NPR's fees. This is AM 920 WBA. And so when those fees went up in 1992, the university was forced to drop NPR. It was awful to go out in the community. I mean, for years, they would stab you. You got my favorite program. And so that really kind of told you how important it was to them. 
Seven years later, just when the replacement news programming from the Christian Science Monitor was getting ready to fold, NPR returned to WBAA. The key was Purdue allowing the station to begin fundraising on the air. Your contribution now ensures WBAA continues to thrive. Very quickly, the listeners responded positively. And we're looking for four new members in about the next 37 minutes. Support for NPR News comes from WBAA and... I continue to be amazed at the product we put out not just the national product from NPR, but the local product that we do, our classical music service, our volunteer hosts who do the Bluegrass Show, and Rose Haber with Rainbow, and the folks that do Acoustic Blend. You're listening to Acoustic Blend. Welcome to Acoustic Blend, AM 920 and 101.3 FM. WBAA means for one thing, news. Most radio stations now don't do much, if any, news at all. And that's been our forte. Early on, we just did what we called rip and read. We took a wire copy and read it on the air, hopefully well. Nowadays, we have our own news operation. They're out covering stories in the community. Now, in the book, you lay out some cases of women who have made great achievements. We engage with the community during our forums, which we have periodically on different issues. Those are usually an hour long. We invite the community to come in and have a dialogue with us but and with our panel of experts. Have, but unless you have the resources and somebody who pays for them, you're not going to get them. The interaction with the community is so important and always has been. It's also Purdue's opportunity to tell Indiana what's going on at that wonderful state university. And the future looks even more special. By partnering with WVA, we're able to really articulate the resources that the Arts Federation has available. I'd like to see us strengthen our partnerships with various community organizations. I'd like to see us strengthen being out in the community. State Fair time, Purdue Day. Specifically in the newsroom, we want to do more news. We want to cover more variety of news. A new facility in the Purdue Research Park will help new technologies for the seed industry. We want to continue to inform our listeners, bring them the most important information that they need to live their life and plan their day. Under a boil water advisory until further notice today. I'd love to see more HD channels. I'd love to see more streams. I'd like to see more opportunities for us to connect with people in many, many different ways. What we do at WBAA is connect with people in a very personal, very intimate way. No other medium can match that at all. So the fact that WBAA is 90 years old and is still here means that we're doing a good job. There'll be another 90 years, I'm sure. Our goal is to provide programming that you can't get anywhere else, but in the end, it all comes down to what matters. You're inside jazz with Don Siebold. WBAA presents sixth grade Spanish. And welcome to AM 920's Expert Connection. This is a WBAA news special. This is concert of your choice. For the great blizzard of late January 1978. News of the Week is a new program on the Purdue University School of the Air. And once again, we come to the close of the dinner hour.